Hello students, myself, Dr. Divya Gildial, continuing with my lecture series on engineering physics for B.Tech first year students. Today, I will continue with your unit two, electromagnetic field theory. In my first video, I have given you a very brief description of your EMT unit, continuity equation, Maxwell's equations in differential and integral form and free space. And what do the terms for Stokes law and Gauss theorem signify? Because you need to know the Stokes law and Gauss theorem before we begin the derivation for Maxwell's equations. Now in this video, I am going to help you derive these Maxwell's equations. Because please remember, Maxwell's equations are very important. You want to appear for EMT as a syllabus in any exam. Maxwell's equations are something like your Newton's equations of motion. So you should be knowing the Maxwell's equations. AKTU paper, section B question often on asked is, discuss the physical significance of Maxwell's equations and section C question, derive Maxwell's four equations. That is section C question is of 10 marks or eight marks. Section B question can be of four or five marks. So what you have to exactly do is learn Maxwell's equations for your AKTU exam. So I begin, once again, I take a quick recap of what I told you in my previous lecture. PDF file of whatever you are seeing on the screen is available below my video link free. You just click that link and this PDF file will download in whatever medium you are watching this video. Okay. Maxwell's first equation. This, what you are, I'm saying right now, you have to write as an answer where question comes, discuss the physical significance of Maxwell's equations. So equation one represents the differential form of Gauss law in electrostatics, which in turn is derived from Coulomb's law. I told you in my first video, electromagnetic field theory means you are studying combined effect of electricity and magnetism. So in electricity, you are taught about Coulomb's law. That is what is represented by first equation in Maxwell's form. Equation two represents Gauss law in magnetostatics, which represents that magnetic monopoles never ever exist. That means you will never come across a combination where North is uh, separate and South is separate. In electric field, it can happen, but never ever in magnetic field. You break a magnet into 10 pieces, all the 10 individual pieces will carry a North and a South pole. So this is represented by Maxwell's second equation. Third equation represents Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. That means, Changing electric field gives rise to changing magnetic field. The equation four of Maxwell represents, it is a modified form of Ampere's law. This modification has been done in your original Ampere law to include time varying fields so that you know you can differentiate the equations. These are the four Maxwell's equations and their physical significance. A very common question of section B. Discuss the physical significance of Maxwell's equations. I'm sure now it must be on your fingertips. So now I proceed towards section C of your question paper. Now, it will be a 10 mark or an 8 mark question stating that derive Maxwell's equations in differential and integral form. If the question is giving you an opportunity not specifying differential or integral, whichever method you find comfortable, suppose you are comfortable with the differential form, then go ahead to define or derive the differential equations. If you are comfortable with the integral part, go ahead to derive them as integral. 
unless and until the question is not specifying, you are free to choose either of the ways. Here, I will tell you both the ways of deriving Maxwell's equations. Okay. Now, the first Maxwell's equation. What did I tell you about the physical significance of first Maxwell's equations? Divergence D equal to rho, where D is displacement current mathematically given by epsilon naught E. E is electric field and rho is your charge density. Now, from Gauss law in electrostatics, what you must have heard must be integral or you must have heard E dot A equal to Q upon epsilon naught. Gauss law in electrostatics, where E is electric field, ds in this case or a the area a, and q the total charge enclosed by that surface divided by epsilon naught where epsilon naught is a constant so that very same equation i have just written it as an integral form that is integral e dot ds means total surface enclosed that is e dot a equal to q upon epsilon naught Instead of Q, I have written integral V rho dot dV. That is the total charge enclosed. Now, instead of E here, I am going to write it in terms of D from this equation here. So what does this expression now become? Epsilon naught, epsilon naught gets cancelled both the sides. And you get integral S D dot DS is equal to integral V rho dot dV. Now we use Gauss divergence theorem to change surface integral into volume integral. Integral V divergence D dV is equal to integral V rho dV. And then we put uh, this term this side so that our right hand side becomes equal to zero and taking integral on both the sides, divergence d equal to rho or del dot d equal to rho. d is displacement current and rho is your charge density. So this is mathematical expression of Maxwell's first equation. Second, let us see the second equation. What is Maxwell's second equation holding for us? See, we know that isolated magnetic poles never exist. Also, magnetic lines of force are closed curves. They originate from the North Pole and go to the South Pole. And then inside the magnet, they are continuous curves whereas the electric lines of force are open. So when this comes as a continuous curve, then the integral factor of this mathematically turns out as zero. So what happens is isolated magnetic poles cannot exist and magnetic induction across any closed surface will always be zero. Mathematically also this is proved and according to the physics concepts we say that magnetic lines of force are continuous closed curves whereas the electric lines of force are open. Now what we are going to do? Gauss divergence theorem to change into surface integral that is volume integral. So we will just use Gauss divergence theorem in this expression and write it as integral V divergence B dV equal to zero. This is a very simple equation or divergence B equal to zero or del dot B equal to zero. This is mathematical expression of Maxwell's second equation. Very, very, very important. Third equation. Have you heard of Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction, which state that when magnetic flux lines vary an emf is induced in the very opposite direction this negative sign here is for the opposite direction so if you remember this law you just have to do a bit of modification here and you will get the third maxwell's equation see from faraday's law of electromagnetic induction 
the induced emf is given by e is equal to minus del phi by del t here this phi expression in case of magnetic field is b dot a and in case of electric field is e dot a so uh, this phi becomes equal to integral s b dot ds or b dot a if i would have taken electric field i would have written e dot a or integral s e dot ds but i am not writing it here otherwise you will get confused let us stick to the magnetic field expression only now i put no, no, no. this value of phi in the expression above and we get this equation emf is also expressed as integral c e dot dl where does this equation come from e is equal to v dot dl that same expression we have written it in an integral form now we compare equation 3 and equation 4 and we get this now using stokes theorem to change line integral into surface integral we finally come as curl e is equal to minus del b by del t mathematically we say changing electric field gives rise to changing magnetic field or vice versa derivation of the fourth equation curl h is equal to j dot plus del d by del t from ampere circuital law we know that integral c h dot dl is equal to current i also current can be written in terms of current density j as i equal to integral s j dot ds equating both these equations of i we and using stokes theorem we get curl h is equal to j this expression if you have a closer look at this expression it is valid only for static fields we have to include the time varying fields in this equation this is the modification of maxwell's fourth equation which wants to include in it the time varying fields in order to include the time varying fields, we are going to do one addition of displacement current expression here in this equation. Have a look at it further. Divergence curl H equal to divergence J. Mathematically, divergence of curl of any quantity is zero. Therefore, divergence J is zero. Also, from equation of continuity, divergence J plus del rho by del T is equal to zero. So, divergence J is equal to minus del rho by del T. In order that divergence D equals to zero, del rho by del T should be zero. That is, charge should be static. Now, in order to include time varying fields in the Maxwell suggested that Ampere's law must be modified. Hence, current density will be replaced by J plus JD, where JD is the current density for displacement current. Hence, Maxwell's equation becomes curl H is equal to J plus JD, where J is for the static field and JD is for the time varying fields. We will take divergence of this quantity apply the mathematics theorem and we get divergence jd is equal to divergence j and from equation of continuity divergence j is minus del rho by del t we put this value here and gauss differential form very simple mathematical step i will just show you And we get the expression as curl H is equal to J plus del D by del T. This is Maxwell's fourth equation. And this is a modified form of Ampere's law. D is electric displacement vector. So Maxwell's fourth equation was made to include time varying fields. Thank you.